Hello and welcome. I am giving a talk today about a topic that I personally think it's not shouldn't be necessary to give a talk about that. Uh, and for a long time it has not been necessary because uh, nearly every group uh, we did know and that was around did actually do precisely that. I want to encourage all of the newer groups now to actually also do. This talk is about uh, running your own fucking infrastructure. It came up as a rent talk on tour camp uh, when I discovered that the whole tour camp was completely run on Google Groups, Google Documents and everything else that you could see that this company from uh, Silicon Valley uh, can provide. So uh, we had the situation that on a hacker camp, actually a company that everybody likes and loves for the product has the complete data of all participants for the camp because it wasn't possible to sign up there without a Google account. That made me make the first version of this talk. <laughs> Short bio. Uh, okay, I'm giving this talk in English because we want to have a video presentation and the idea behind that is that I don't want to give this talk anymore. And I actually want to point out there is a link on the internet to media, CCCD or whatever, where you can look for this talk. Uh, I personally think this talk shouldn't need to be given anywhere, but I think if this talk would be available as a acceptable video presentation, you can show it in your hacker space and can encourage people there to uh, do all this. And this is the reason why I'm giving the talk in English on a German event with nearly exclusively German speaking people. I'm sorry, it, yeah, for my bad English. Okay, uh, most of me, most of you know me. Uh, I'm McFly, I'm actually around the CCC thingy for a bit, I guess. Um, I studied computer science at the University of Darmstadt, uh, meanwhile had over five years, and this is slightly outdated, uh, experience of uh, working admin as an administrator in security related environments. Uh, at the moment I work at a payment provider in security, I'm a security specialist there and my job contains um, Nmap and Metasploit and all those stuff all the day. So it's good fun and keep doing this. There's lots of nice jobs in security. Uh, yeah. I gave talks on some conferences and like to run around at hackerspaces and other conferences. And basically, uh, I think what most people know me for is running the milliways that uh, will show up on the next camp again. Why? Why should I want to run my own infrastructure? Because it's actually convenient to have somebody else run it, right? If you ever try to run your own fucking infrastructure, you might have set up a server that runs your mail, left it there for two years, and then you accidentally SSH in the server again and have two years of more experience and you were like, oh my, f what did I do there? This is a process where you possibly need to go through and iterations help there and it will end with you understanding lots of computers in the end. So why should I give this? Uh... Oh yeah. Uh... Nope, I think that's fine here in Germany. So it's so easy to put stuff in the cloud. Why should I run my own fucking infrastructure? Um, one of the reasons that is pretty obvious to everybody and that is mentioned here very often is if you put your stuff on the cloud, uh, the government will have access to it. Actually pretty easy. But that's not the only reason. There are other things like the uh, provider will modify the service. You have all seen when somebody changes a website that you use heavily because some user experience guy said do this totally different and you find it unusable and you can't do anything about that. You might experience, who of you has a Facebook account? Okay, you don't need to admit that, but I assume there are like people in here that have a Facebook account, uh, maybe a third of you, and do you remember the last time the terms of services on Facebook changed? It does so pretty frequently, it does change uh, a lot of the legal stuff around documents and things published there. 
And if you want to keep your Facebook account, don't look in there ever. Um, another problem is that a provider might cancel a server, a service. Rarely unknown, providers might modify your data. This does happen. Uh, they might steal your data. And one of the worst things that actually uh, does happen is providers might get hacked. The question you're all seeing those questions up there is who do you trust with your data? Do you want to trust a cloud provider that is possibly not even in your legal sphere of the country or whatever you are in? Or do you want to trust an administrator that you can go to and give him a beer and give him a club mate or tell him what you think of the latest other things, positive and, yeah, well, no, I think for the, we had the topic for the no, more positive. Government has access. I think today that is a question that is, does not really need a long discussion anymore. For a long time it meant that basically the five eyes had access to the data you put in the cloud and to other providers. Um, today we need to say that almost every government that asked has access to the data. And it's not only the police. It's tax authorities and investigation services and as we see in cases in America, the uh, school authority, uh, there is tons of government related uh, groups that get at one point or another point access to your data. And not in all countries and in every case that means that there is a judge that needs to be asked before that. In a lot of the cases and in a lot of the countries the police just writes a mail to Facebook and, well, gets the data they ask for. Actually, they usually don't write mails. They have still in this paper time where they send pieces of papers. So for the stuff, that's not government because there's lots of other stuff that, uh, <coughs> that are interesting there why you want to run your own fucking infrastructure. Um, providers uh, change their service from time to time. Most providers that haven't changed their service in the last 10 years aren't actually around anymore today. Uh, only very few are. And the other might uh, change their services. Very often that's an improvement. Uh, sometimes that's not really improvement. Um, a very important point is there uh, that if you start with a service that is especially in the beginning of the service free and after a certain time, after a certain amount of users have been boarded, uh, it comes to this point that in the documentations of the companies very often described as the monetization strategy, usually you get either get ads or parts of the service will turn into what they call freemium. That basically means you then suddenly have to pay to access your own data. Provider might cancel service. The monetization strategy. Um, that's actually uh, not that unimportant point for most of those service providers because if you fail there, usually the service is gone after a while. It very often ends in a way that it gets bought by another company and the data migrated to somewhere you can't really see or say. Um, but even in cases where the data doesn't show up anywhere else, uh, somebody of you who remembers Google Wave? <laughs> who did like it? <laughs> see? Uh, there is other sites, uh, GeoCities that contains tons of tons of uh, free and private websites is closed and not reachable anymore today. Mega Upload, uh, Dodgeball, Microsoft Zune. <laughs> Whoever bought their music in the beginning of the digital age was Microsoft Zune. They had some uh, DMA protected uh, music files that needed to talk to their home server every time you wanted to play them. And at one point, Microsoft decided to switch off their server and you had some time to download them as MP3 and if you didn't, your music's gone. Well, the music you paid for is gone. 
provider might modify data. This is a point that is very often not really seen as one of the dangers when you when it comes to storing data in the cloud. In this game, I'm mostly referencing to YouTube, where it is mostly most obvious. Uh, play music in a German video, put it on YouTube, and it's gone faster than you can count to like five. Um, and that is not only true for music that really the music companies that claim to have the rights really have the rights. Uh, we had lots of problems with some videos we published about the data retention law because we had some Creative Commons music in there and it got taken down 20 times because of claims of Time Warners and Sony and whatever. So no, this is claims like we have had was one of the videos we had about the Vorratsdatenspeicherung, the data retention laws. We had more than 20 claims from music companies for music in there that actually was Creative Commons music. Uh, another interesting thing, not so obvious in Germany, and this is also very interesting because this gets localized. Uh, if you have a video that contains fuck, in Germany you can hear the fuck, and if you watch over your VPN connection as American, the fuck gets silenced out. <laughs> this, is, this is a modification of data. And you possibly do not really realize that you have given YouTube the right to modify your data this way. Um, another thing that actually modifying data is a thing that's more legal-wise. Uh, your data is also the stuff you put in into the websites like Facebook and stuff. And if you use that, you will find that they constantly modify your especially privacy settings. And I'm not. Don't want to just bash Facebook there all the time. Most of the social social media platforms actually do that. Provider might steal data. Did anyone have you, have you ever used these URL shorteners? Did you read the documentation which company runs them and what their monetization strategy is? Because that's actually interesting. Um, you completely give them the right on the data to modify search whatever uh, when you link them with that and they don't only mean the link with that, actually the data managed in there. And uh, they have business models for searching for some terms and phrases and things that get fashion. So this is what this partly is used to, to find the latest trends. To get through all this data, to get some metadata out of that and to even use your data. Because with all of those, uh, Instagram, anyone here? Did any picture of your Instagram ever show up on an Instagram website like in ads or something? I know at least two cases and you really can't do anything about that. You allowed that to them. They can at every time use any of your pictures to just make ads and stuff like that. <coughs> Without even telling you. Um, provisors might abuse your data. That is also rather hard to see. Uh, one of the points where I saw that is if you run your own fucking infrastructure, you actually see in your log files what happens and who accesses your data. And if you then, for example, on your server share something over, uh, in this example, Skype, who does that, but other do that also, uh, you will see that the first thing happening is Skype is accessing the data and then the data around that. And the official excuse for that is that you need to prefetch that you don't share any malicious stuff with that. But also after pointing it out, they stopped for that. Mm. Other thing is those people who use lots of applications where they abuse your data, they sometimes state it in the terms of services. But did you ever have the problem that somebody was posting on your behalf because you accidentally allowed any application in something to whatever? This happens actually quite a lot, especially in the gaming scene. And for the last and the most funny of that, especially here, is uh, one of the dangers you run into when you leave your cloud on your stuff in the cloud is that your stuff might get hacked. This might happen also if you run your data by your own. But 
just imagine the size of the target that is laying around there if you can pwn 13.7 million users compared to the 12 on the hackerspace. So, yeah. Does anybody know how often Sony has even been hacked in the last two years? Because I tried to find that out and I failed. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> Um, the did Sony get hacked last week website that basically answers yes or no if Sony got hacked last week was a no for eight days in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> GoDaddy got hacked, Dropbox got hacked, AT&T, there's somebody, well, I, that's not really completely got hacked, that is more they misconfigured their service and somebody was very stupid in pointing that out, so they put him to jail for that, which totally makes sense. Well, uh, Blizzard was hacked, Living Social, Rock You, and I'm very sure those three points are by far not enough to describe and count all the other companies that got hacked and their data lost over the time. Um, this actually is a problem of a size that is uh, hardly even comes to surface, because if the companies got uh, hacked, it's the, com the corporate communication usually tries to keep that under the carpet and not publish too much about that. It would be very interesting to get laws that force them to inform the users of uh, personal data to, uh, when data got hacked, but this is not the case and this is not happening at all. So there's way more. So you see all those questions really a lot of them come to one point. Are you and your provider's interest really aligned? Do you have the same interest as your provider does? The other answer is very clearly yes, if you're your own provider. Uh, if not, the provider might be only interested in profit due to legal reasons, because most companies that are created for profit actually are required by law to at least try to make profit. Um, therefore, uh, keeping your data safe and private is uh, for them a case of uh, balancing out the cost for security versus the benefits they have from keeping your data private. So uh, your data actually gets a price tag. That is one of the results of that. And this is the security price tags and this is something that should fuck up, shut up. Uh, as said, the only provider there is where your interests uh, are really aligned with you is yourself. Uh, if you look for your hacker space, that might be a slightly different thing, though. And always remember, if it's free, you're the product. That is sadly nearly always true. Okay, this is a disclaimer slide uh, that says... If you run your own fucking infrastructure, you might end up being hacked too. So find some people in your hacker space that are capable or you think are most capable of that and make a group of people that run that. Um, in the end, I would say is if you run your updates pretty frequently, you are out of most of the stuff. Furthermore, there are some mailing lists you might want to read and follow there. Uh, what usually does not help is go and install a security solution from a company that promises you to put security in there, but we all know that. So the first talk, as I said, I gave this talk. I gave this talk on the tour camp. And everybody was like, but it's so comfortable comfy to just put them on the slides, but then something happened. This guy. Um, as he said, I'm not really making anything up of the access of the government. I think most of you have read way more stuff they hoped they would never have to read somewhere in the papers about where your data travels and where data about you travels and what data is collected about you and all the stuff besides the companies, but also if it's collected by the companies, uh, the government requires just the right to access any of those data.
So, uh, for, first, for many people, prison was the first case where this really became public. Uh, but if you Google for that and follow the common uh, conspiracy theories websites like FIFA or others, you will easily uh, realize that uh, this has been going on this way at least since 1990, where the first of those programs started. Uh, some of them became slightly more sophisticated than they had been before. Some of them now target stuff that is really interesting and not like before, just the noise in the internet. But the will of the security uh, services and all the three-letter agencies to get your, the fingers onto your data, um, that's nothing new. That is at least since the 1990s. So, what to do? Uh, how many different hackerspaces do we have here? Who from you is from a hackerspace? 42. Uh, I think a third of the people are from any hackerspace. I'm pretty sure this is more like 10, 15 different hackerspaces of you. Uh, can the hackerspaces that actually do run their own fucking infrastructure just raise their hand? That's at least most of it, if not all. Do we have a hackerspace here that does not run their own fucking infrastructure? Okay, one very brave, one person at least that I hope where this actually does, or a hackerspace where this actually does change something. For a very, very, very long time, this is, and this is maybe the wrong event to tell that the people, because for a lot of people, this is since a very long time when you look around. Um, it really has been that the hackerspaces runs their own fucking infrastructure. Uh, that has been mostly websites and mails and mailing lists. Um, I don't think that today this is everything you should run. I think today you need slightly more and it helps a lot to run more. What can I run myself by myself? All those services above there are not really, really complicated to run by yourself. And also I'm very sure that several people of you will miss something for that. So if you run something for yourself, um, one of the things you need to uh, I'm sorry, it's hard to yeah. Um, this is the stuff that Milliways runs by ourselves. We are not a hackerspace, we are a group of people that sit around on the internet, so we at some points needed some things and this came along with the making of the talk over the time. Um, we have set up all of this in, I think, a week and then some weekends. It's not really a lot of work. I think, and I propose what every hackerspace and every group here should run by themselves is, for example, a Jabba server. If you have seen the CCC Jabba server and given the point that um, IO error told in his talk everybody to use the CCC Jabba server, it's now one of the biggest in the world. It makes it a that big target and it makes it that big hassle to keep it running, which actually is mostly the bigger problem. <laughs> um, you should run in your hackerspace email because even still today where most people think that is just the delivery pass for spam, um, it is very important, especially together with mailing lists. Uh, you want to add next the CalDAV and the CardDAV because uh, that's something where you, what you actually use a lot on your mobile phone. And that is a very nice place where you share a lot of data with Google automatically. Just think of your phone book. Fits easily and perfectly with an Android phone on the server. Uh, cloud storage, we use C-File for that. Another possibly is Dropbox. There are other things for that. C-File works really fine. I can show some of that later. For organization, we have Redmime and an Etherpad. And 
for most hackerspaces, having that around, or at least in use, not everybody needs to set up its own pad. But for example, for the uh, red mime, for example, I think that is, if you actually do projects, a very, very valuable po uh, tool. One of the rules that everybody knows that has done administration for a while is administration is kind of work. Uh, so it helps to script and monitor that. And another point, if you start that, start in the beginning with uh, setting something up with a centralized address thing. I We have started with an open LDAP. <laughs> the guys who wrote open LDAP really like brackets. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Set it up, get it running, and never, never ever look in there. It's really kind of ugly. But in the end, it saves a lot of work, so I think it's worth it. Uh, an alternative, there is privacy idea, which uh, allows two-factor authorization. It supplies you with an LDAP and a Radius interface. You can, can uh, authenticate all your services, websites, emails, Jabba, and all the stuff against that. But... Introducing privacy idea here would be enough for its own talk that is maybe scheduled for the Mitterrand Mein Chaos days or something. Um, yeah. And also the last point we want to put up is we'll put up all the code and the config snippets we had to connect all the different software because this is most of the work setting all this up uh, in a GIP until the end of the Easter hack. This is not done yet, so don't try to clone it yet. <laughs> um, yeah, the thing that uh, saves most of the uh, work is actually uh, you need to write some software around the uh, user authentic authentication that we can give you. The, we hope that somebody takes it and writes something even more awesome about that. Uh, for us, it works. Uh, let me see if I find it. This is... So this is uh, the stuff that actually takes most work, and as you, as, as you can see, it's really not complicated. Everybody who has spent a while coding knows that using this is not a lot of work. You basically have a registry where you sign up with a username and password that gets submitted into a database, and uh, administrator later moves that on into an LDAP. This is everything you practically know, need to do. And that sounds like pretty easy and like the rest of the whole talk, which I think is from the beginning and the end kind of obvious and shouldn't need to, well, anyway. Um, this is the stuff you need in your daily life. And it's very nice to just be able to drop this link in an IC channel to just say, hey, everybody who wants to use that, sign up here. And some lines later, you have the people on the network and they can all use all the stuff you built is actually a nice thing. I thought in the beginning that not a, not a lot of people would use that. We still don't consider milliways like being productive. It's still kind of better and stuff like that. But we are at how many users? We had 70 users in a short time. And especially the stuff that gets used a lot, which did surprise me, was the C file, which is the cloud uh, storage. A lot of people use that, for example, to get the pictures from their mobile phones on their laptops because it's a Dropbox replacement where you start in your own uh, hackerspace. Uh, and that's everything you need to set up for the people that just everybody can use it. Okay, I think there's just the thank you slides left. Uh, so does any one of you have any questions?
I'm a dead administrator for a longer time, so I like to use the Debian given tools. I use uh, Postfix, Dovecut, and stuff like that for that. Um, I don't really like to use pre-built stuff uh, in the except in the extent this pre-built stuff comes to Docker, and uh, I like those ideas in the one side, but you will import a lot of security problems, possibly what you can't really overlook into your own house. In the end, in Docker, I looked up for something for WordPress. The most famous WordPress plug, uh, WordPress doc has in somewhere down there in the area for updates, something like wget, and then they get something from an HTT website, and then it says pipe bash. And this updates your Docker. So I looked into that and said, yeah, they possibly need some to become a bit more mature before I would use that. Uh, I think in most hackerspaces, it's not really a problem to set up uh, postfix, dovecut, roundcube, squirrel mail, or, or roundcube or squirrel mail. Um, and there's tons of really good how to's on the internet to do this with Debian. If you've done this more than once, I don't think in a group of two, three people who do administration, this shouldn't take more longer than like two hours. In the whole list I have had here, the whole LDAP was roughly a third of the time and the rest is basically set it up with Debian and then connected to the LDAP and it's done. So I hope in the future we will be able to provide a, a Docker container that we can just give around or any other container software to people to just run that. Uh, at the moment, I would recommend everybody to look in those containers and see what the people are doing in there, and you see ugly things if you actually do. Are there any more questions? Yes. There are a lot of NGOs uh, not uh, uh, in hacking issues, and they need the same thing. They need their own infrastructure. I always... Uh, they ask us, and uh, Digital Courage ask us, what can we do? And we always say, go to the next hack space, ask them. Is that a good idea? Depends on the hack hacker space. There are some hacker spaces where I would say, this is a really good idea. And there are some hacker spaces where I would be careful about that. If their website is hosted with WordPress and the mailing list is on Google News and uh, Google Groups and their stuff, usually it's not a good address too. <clears throat> they all can learn. Any more questions? Well, I try to desperately find the other slides again. We ended with uh, own cloud that we don't use for file storage because the CalDAV and CardDAV part is actually pretty decent. Uh, OwnCloud sucks if you use their storage part. We use C file for the storage. But the CalDAV and CardDAV is awesome. If anyone has any better solutions, we would be very proud to get something running there. And one of the stuffs we want to do is uh, this allows will allow comments and discussions, I hope. So we look for people that want to help with that. And if you look for help setting this up, you can reach us. The best thing to actually reach us is IRC. Um, we hang around on Pound Mealy Ways on Hackend. And yeah, I'm coming to the end of the talk. If nobody has any questions. One question. Yes, we use Roundcube with a Sieve plugin. That is actually pretty neat because, and this actually gets users over to your server because everybody has this tons of mailing lists they're subscribed to and have the Thunderbird configured their filters to filter all their stuff, but they would like to have it on the server, but they never set up Sieve. So with us, you, or with the stuff we have, you just upload your fire, uh, your Thunderbird filter file and it imports it into Sieve and works awesome. I can really, really recommend that just for this detail, the uh, Roundcube Sieve filter. Did, uh, the question was, did we ever use Colab? Uh, we looked on it and it looked kind of interesting, but uh, also very big and complicated and complex and 
so we decided to go with our way. Any more questions? So, first of all, then coming to thanks, thank you for the US government uh, that actually made this talk easier and really made it easier for me to tell people that you should run your own fucking infrastructure because thanks to them who started all this and thanks to Snowden who unveiled all this, I don't really have to argue a lot about that anymore and just show them, do you know this face like this guy who sits in Russia at the moment? Okay, but I would also like to use this uh, to say thank you for the administrators that run stuff for me. I try to frequently give people that run stuff for me a Club Mate or a beer from, while to while, from time to time. I think that's actually a good idea and if there are some people around that run stuff for you, you possibly should take this up and supply them with a Club Mate from time to time because administrating stuff is often work at the time where you can't need it. It's not a lot of work though. And I would also like to thank thank you to some of the people from Milliways who have gone over the slide and made us made all the server.